Perhaps Afghanistan was the last country anyone expected to successfully launch a large, complex, and ambitious project, especially given that, for over 50 years, it has struggled with war, violence, poverty, and severe sanctions. Yet today, despite all these challenges and without relying on foreign aid, Afghanistan has initiated a project that has captured attention not only in the region but also globally. This massive project is called the Koch Tepa Canal. Once completed, it will be one of the largest and longest irrigation canals in the world. Located in northern Afghanistan, the canal stretches approximately 285 kilometers in length, is about 18 meters wide, and 8.5 meters deep. It resembles an artificial river with a critical mission to revive arid farmlands and support the country's food security. The goal of constructing this canal is to divert water from the Amu Darya River in Balkh province and channel it through Jazjan and Faryab provinces. Nearly half of the canal route has already been excavated and work continues at a remarkable pace. Given the water and food crises, Afghan engineers and officials have identified this project as a national priority. Neighboring countries such as Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan, which share the Emu Darya's waters with Afghanistan, have expressed concerns over a potential reduction in their water shares. However, the Afghan government, emphasizing its historical lack of access to the river, insists that it merely seeks its legal share. For decades, Afghanistan has been unable to properly utilize the river due to geographical challenges. Now it is time for northern Afghan farmers to benefit from this natural resource. The project is expected to rescue over one million people from water shortages and reintegrate thousands of farmers back into agricultural work. Its ultimate goal is to transform approximately 550,000 hectares of barren land into fertile fields suitable for growing wheat and grains. Afghanistan plans to become a major wheat exporter in the region by 2028. Construction of the Koch Tepa Canal began in March 2022 and is being carried out in three phases. The first two phases involve canal excavation, while the third phase includes installing irrigation systems, underground piping, and other technical infrastructure. Although the initial budget was estimated at around $100 million, some sources now estimate the final cost could reach $1 billion. Surprisingly, the project is being implemented without any foreign assistance, relying entirely on domestic capacity and the participation of over 67 companies and 200 private contractors. To complete the first phase, more than 7,000 dump trucks, 20 excavators, and other construction machinery were used. Excavation was carried out in a highly organized and systematic manner. Once a section was approved by engineers, equipment moved on to the next section. One of the major strengths of this project is the design and construction of 14 hydraulic gates to manage floods and control water flow. These gates distribute water from the Amu Darya into 114 narrow earthen branches during high water levels, preventing wall erosion and dangerous floods. As the project progresses, these systems will be fully developed and optimized. Another cost-effective and innovative method used in this project is the construction of an unlined earthen canal. This decision sparked mixed reactions. Critics argue that the lack of concrete lining leads to water leakage and loss. Proponents, however, point out that over 100 kilometers of the canal has been filled with water without significant reduction in the Amu Darya's levels, suggesting that infiltrated water actually recharges underground aquifers, which could be tapped during droughts. Building a concrete-lined canal would have required over $1 billion solely for cement and concrete structures, an amount Afghanistan could not afford. 
Therefore, a traditional, natural method was chosen for being both practical and cost-effective. During the implementation, two concrete bridges were constructed, one for the Heraton Balk Highway and another for the railway line. These bridges were simply but effectively designed and built using on-site concrete casting. Additionally, underground irrigation pipelines were installed in predetermined areas, ensuring water access even for farmers located far from the main canal. In the final stages of Phase 1, more than 1 million cubic meters of earth was excavated daily. Considering that much of the equipment used dated back to the 1960s, the project's progress is truly commendable. Along the canal's edges, thousands of trees have been planted to prevent soil erosion and enhance soil quality. From its inception, the Koch Tepe Canal project has generated thousands of jobs, revitalized abandoned farms, and led to the reconstruction of local roads. Grain cultivation trials have also been conducted along the canal to evaluate soil quality and irrigation system performance. Another important innovation in this project is the extensive use of solar panels. Due to a lack of electricity infrastructure in some areas, solar energy has been used to power homes, water pumps, and workshops. This approach simultaneously supports agricultural development and promotes energy self-sufficiency in rural communities. At the current pace of progress, the Kosh Tepe Canal is expected to be fully operational before 2028, enabling wheat exports from Afghanistan to begin. There is hope that such projects can heal the wounds of decades of war and transform the country into a productive, self-reliant, and influential player in the region. In conclusion, some important questions remain. Was the decision to build the canal without concrete the right one? Can Afghanistan truly become a major wheat exporting country? What's your view on this massive transformation?